Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be simplifying a trigonometric expression with complex numbers. A complex trigonometric expression. Now when you get a problem like this there's a lot of ways to look at it. So I'm going to be presenting four methods and they're all going to be complete hopefully. All right great let's go ahead and start with the first method. So for my first method, I'm going to take this expression and do what is the most straightforward approach, which is multiplying by the conjugate. We just use conjugates at CyberMath. Remember the other channel, I had a video about radicals, hopefully you've seen it. Anyways, so I'm going to multiply this by cosine theta plus i sine theta divided by the same thing. That's the conjugate, right, for the denominator. And in the numerator, I just need to distribute. There's no shortcut, right? Go ahead and multiply everything. Sine theta, cosine theta, and then plus i sine squared theta, plus i cosine squared theta, plus i squared sine theta, cosine theta. And all of that is divided by the product of these two things, which makes actually a sum of two squares, cosine squared theta, plus sine squared theta. And guess what? That's equal to one even when theta is complex. Isn't that awesome? So this is one I don't have to worry about it. And notice that i squared is negative 1, so these two are going to cancel out, leaving us with something super duper nice, i times sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. But sine squared plus cosine squared, we just talked about it, it's 1, right? And then from here we get i. Was that a surprise? Let's see the other methods, okay? Just stick around. Second method. Remember we're going to do four methods, right? And if you can come up with the fifth one, please let me know. Let us know in the comment section because I'll be more than happy to learn. Sine theta plus i cosine theta divided by cosine theta minus i sine theta. So I always start with that. For my second method, I'm going to use my super powers, which is called trigonometric identities. Okay? Is that a superpower? Absolutely. So to change the name of sine to cosine and cosine to sine, because that's what happened in the numerator, I'm going to use, what is that called? Uh, when two angles add up to 90 degrees, I think they're called complementary. Yes, complementarity. Anyways, that's a, such a weird word that I heard today on the radio. Anyways, uh, we can write sine theta as cosine pi over 2 minus theta, and I can write the cosine theta as sine of pi over 2 minus theta. You see, subtracting an angle from... Um, pi over 2 is going to change the name of the function. For the bottom one, uh, I can take advantage of the fact that cosine is an even function and sine is an odd function, which is helpful in this case. And notice that I have two complex numbers in standard form. How do you divide a plus bi by c plus di? Easy, you multiply by the conjugate. You don't need to do it here because these are in polar form. Well, at least I can write them in polar form, right? So the top is going to be e to the power i times pi over 2 minus theta and the bottom is going to be e to the power negative i theta. So all you have to do is subtract the arguments, right? And then that's going to give you e to the power i times pi over 2 minus theta minus plus theta. So the theta is going to cancel out, leaving us with e to the power i pi over 2, which is nothing but i. Because if you remember the argon plane, the argon plane gives us i right here because it makes a... 90 degree angle with the real axis and this is the real that's the imaginary and that's the argon plane okay great so the answer is i one more time are you surprised you should be okay great so obviously this is not the only way to approach it we could also directly subtract these arguments and if when we did it should give us something like this cosine of pi over 2 plus i times sine of pi over 2 you should know that Cosine pi over 2 is cosine 90, which is 0, and this is 1, giving us with i again, or 1i, right? Great. Let's go ahead and take a look at the third and the fourth method. Hopefully, the fourth method will have a happy ending, okay? So, for my third method, let me rewrite the original problem to keep that in perspective all the time. That's important. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with the numerator, sine theta plus i cosine theta. I'm going to modify it. I'm going to do a little bit of hocus pocus. Are you ready? 
Well, first of all, I squared is negative 1, so negative I squared is 1. In other words, I can just attach a negative I squared here without really disturbing anything. Why is that important? Because I can factor out an I, right? If you factor out an I and write this term first, you're going to have cosine theta minus I sine theta. So if you go ahead and replace this with that, which is the numerator, I times cosine theta minus I sine theta divided by cosine theta minus I sine theta is just going to be I because cosine theta minus I sine theta is going to cancel. In other words, if you multiply one of these by negative I, you get the other one. Or multiply by I, you get the other one. Make sense? Okay, just another way to approach the problem by using, I don't know, properties of I, maybe? Properties of complex numbers. Okay, the fourth method. Ready? All right. So for my fourth method, I want to go ahead and use the polar form. But not the polar form. Actually, I want to use Euler's formula. Now, as you know, this is equal to I theta. And if you, E to the I theta, and if you change the theta to negative, theta, you're going to get e to the negative i theta. So that gives us two formulas. One is cosine theta, which is e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta divided by 2. And the other one is sine theta, which is e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta divided by 2i. Be careful, there's an i here and numerator has a minus sign. Make sense? Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to plug it in. That's what we can do, right? Obviously. And this is definitely different from the other methods because we haven't used this idea before. Now I'm going to replace sine theta with e to the i theta minus, oops, not there, e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta over 2i plus i times cosine theta, which is e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta divided by 2. All of that is divided by cosine theta, again, e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta divided by 2 minus i times sine theta, which is e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta divided by 2i. Have some patience, right, writing all these things. Now notice that the i cancels out, which leaves us with a common uh, denominator, which is nice. And here, we can actually multiply by 2i so that we can get a common denominator. Notice that. And i squared is negative 1, so that's going to negate it, and the bottoms are just going to be handled. So let's go ahead and separate these into two fractions and maybe multiply by reciprocals, so it's going to look like this. The numerator is going to be e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta minus e to the i theta minus e to the negative i theta. Notice that the minus sign is going to act on the plus sign. That's going to be divided by 2i. And the other guy is going to have a 2 because I flipped it. And in the denominator, which is going to be coming from here, e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta minus e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta. Let's see if something simplifies. Here, I can go ahead and get rid of these two things. And then here, I can get rid of these two things. And I'm going to end up with negative 2 times e to the negative i theta divided by negative 2, not negative 2, 2i times 2 over 2 times e to the power negative i theta. Notice that these twos are all going to cancel out, leaving us with negative 1 over i. And these are going to cancel out as well, so it's going to be negative 1 over i. If you multiply by i or negative i, it's totally up to you. I usually use negative i in these cases. Then you're going to get negative i squared, which is 1 at the bottom, and the negative is going to negate the negative, and you're going to end up with i. And that's the happy ending. Happy birthday. All right, great. Now, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.